Dear secondary stage students, year one, welcome to our English program. Today we are going to complete unit nine, part two. We're going to focus on grammar. We're going to compare the past simple tense with the past perfect tense. And we are going to discuss a very important matter. This is studying. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer to study at home or at school? Which one is more preferable to you? Do you like studying online or do you want to study at school? Let's start together. What are our objectives for today? By the end of this lesson, you will be able to express your opinion about education at school. Use the past simple tense and the past perfect to show the sequence of actions in the past. Now we have a very important uh, uh, matter to discuss. This is studying and the importance of studying. In the 19th century, many of the children from rich families or important families had lessons with a teacher who came to their homes instead of them going to school. So in the 19th century, the children of rich families didn't go to school. Do you remember in the last lesson, we talked about the governess? Who is the governess? The governess is a teacher, a woman who goes to people's house to teach them. She not only teaches them uh, their school subjects, but also teaches them everything. So the governess is a woman who goes to people's house. She stays with the child in his house and she teaches him. She teaches him not only the school subjects, but also she teaches them how to uh, play the piano, how to do sewing if she is a girl and so on. A lot of activities. So why do you think that the parents in the 19th century didn't send their children to school? Why did they teach them at home? We can think of many ideas. For example, we can say that in the 19th century, schools were not very good. They were not well equipped. So they prefer to let their uh, children stay at home and they bring the teacher or the governess to teach them. But do you think nowadays, is it better to study at home or is it better to study at school? For me, I think that school is full of activities and you can learn through games and through activities. So it will be learning will be fun. Okay, let's uh, discuss this and see the different ideas about it. Why do you think it was the children of rich or important people who had lessons at home? Of course, the rich didn't send their children to school because the school at that time weren't good enough. They preferred to employ governesses to educate them and to teach them sewing and playing the piano. Question number two. Do you think that learning at home today helps students get good education? And why do you think so? As I told you before, I think that learning at school today is better because our schools are well equipped. What does it mean well equipped? It means it has a lot of equipment. It has a smart boards and it has laptop and it has uh, tablets. So we have a lot of equipment which students may use to make learning fun. So the students have the opportunity to do activities and they play games, which makes learning more interesting. So of course, learning at school or studying at school will be very useful to students. Now we have some collocation. Do you remember the word the collocation? What does it mean, the collocation? The collocation means that there are some verbs that go with some nouns. So we can say, for example, keep in touch or stay in touch. What does it mean to keep in touch? Means to communicate with someone. So if I want my friend not to be away and uh, to communicate with me, I will tell him keep in touch or stay in touch. What is the opposite? The opposite lose touch. When I say I lose the touch with my friend, 
means we stopped communicating with each other. What about the word do? Of course, as you know, the word do is one of the most famous collocations. We say do the homework, uh, do a quiz, do a test, do an activity, do operation. So the word do is very familiar to you. Here in the unit, we said do a course, to do a course online, to do a course or to do a study, to do a project, to do research, to do an activity. And the word make, we have make friends, make decisions, make money. You can say make money or make a decision or make friends. These are very important collocations in our unit. So what are collocations again? They are groups of words that usually go together. Here we have the meaning of each collocation, keep in touch with. What's it to keep in touch with someone means to continue to contact with someone. What about to lose touch with? To lose touch with someone means to stop contacting with someone. To do an online course, what's it to do an online course means to study online. Make friends, what does it mean to make friends? Means to start a friendship with someone. Now it's time for grammar and we want to differentiate, we want to tell the difference between the past simple and the past perfect. Look at these two sentences and they tell the difference. When I reached the airport, the plane left. When I reached the airport, the plane had left. What is the difference between these two sentences? In the first sentence, the two verbs in the past simple. When I reached the airport, the plane left. It means that the two actions happened in the same time. So at the same time, when I reach it, the plane left. So here I have the opportunity to catch the, the plane. So I managed to catch it. So in the first sentence, I managed to catch the plane because it left at the same time when I arrived. So when I use two words in the past simple, it means that the two actions happened at the same time in the past. So when I say, when I reach the station, the train left, it means that I caught the train. I managed to catch the train. When I reach the airport, the plane left, means I managed to catch the plane. Okay? Let's look at the, uh, the next uh, example. When I reach the airport, the plane had left. The plane had left, it means that it left before I reached the airport. So when we use the past the perfect, it means this is the action which happened the first in the past. So when I say when I reach the airport, the plane had left, means the plane left before I arrived. So the plane left first, then I arrived at the station or at the airport. So it means that I missed the plane. Let's look again at the two examples. When I reach the airport, the plane left. The two verbs in the past simple, it means that I managed to catch that, uh, the plane. Uh, the next sentence, when I reach the airport, the plane had left. One in the past simple and the other in the past perfect, it means that I didn't catch the plane. So when two actions are in the past, one of them is past simple and the other is past perfect. Which happened first? The first action is in the past perfect. And the second action is in the past simple. So when I say, I arrived at the station first, then the, the train left. So I say, when the train had left, I arrived at the station. Or when I arrived at the station, the train had left. So when we use the past perfect tense, it means this is the action which happened first. Now let's revise quickly the past simple tense. What does the past simple tense express? It expresses something finished in the past. Something finished in the past. So I can say my father built this house 10 years ago. Again, it expresses series of action in the past. Series of actions means actions that follow each other in the past without any interval. 
Oliver Twist slept in the fields and ate very little. Afterwards, kind people give him food. To express past habit, we can use the past simple to express past habit. So we can say, when I was young, I went to school on foot every day. So when I wanted to say that it's my habit to go to school on foot every day in the past, we say, when I was young, I went to school every day on foot. So what is the form of the past simple? It is the second form of the verb. There are two types of verbs, regular and irregular verbs. The regular verb, we add D, E, D, or I, E, D. Like close, closed, invite, invited, start, started. So we say Ahmed visited his friends yesterday. What about the irregular? We have the second form of the verb, like see, so, give, gave, take, took, coast, coast, read, read, and sleep, slept. So we say, they saw a show last night. So this is the form of the past simple. This is the second form of the verb. What about the past simple passive? When we use the passive form, we start with the object. We add was or were plus past participle. So we say, they watched a film last night. This is the active form. When we turn it into passive, we say, a film was watched last night. A film was watched so we add was plus past participle a film was watched last night let's have some exercise on the past simple last year we to the beautiful city of venus in italy of course here we have a key word the last year which expresses the past simple so we use the second form of the verb last year we yes of course we traveled question number two anna to class yesterday. Again, here we have yesterday. It's a key word which expresses the past simple. So we say Anna to class yesterday because she was at the hospital. Anna didn't come, doesn't come, don't come, wasn't come. Of course, we have the word yesterday. So we use the past simple didn't come. So in the past simple, in the negative form, we use didn't. Question number three. It was snowing last night. It's so cold. Again, we have the word last night. It's a key word for the past simple. So we use the second form of the verb. So we say it touched, it felt, it happened, it had. طبعاً إحنا عندنا هنا كل الverbs past simple. Which one is uh, suitable for this sentence? We say it felt so cold. It felt so cold. So I feel so cold because it was snowing. So it felt so cold. Question number four. When I went on holiday, I always a lot of photographs. Of course, here we have the word always, but it's a, it expresses a habit, but it's a habit in the past. A habit in the past, we use again the past simple. So we use the second form of the verb. When I went on holiday, I always took photographs. Why we use took here? Because the past simple can express a habit in the past. So when I, w I went on holiday, I always took photos. Omar across the Sahara last year. Again, we have the word last year. So last year is a key word of the past simple. So we say Omar cycled across the Sahara last year. Because last year expresses the past simple. Ahmed grandmother's ill when he visited her yesterday. Again, we have the word yesterday. So Ahmed, the grandmother, seemed ill. So we use the past simple tense because we have key word which express something which finished in the past. Now let's look at this timeline of tenses. We have the present simple and before the present, we have the past. Before the past, we have the past perfect. So this gives us an idea. What is the past perfect is? The past perfect is an action that happened in the past before another action which happened again in the past. So when we have two actions in the past, one of them happened before the other, we use the past perfect. Let's see what is the past perfect. The past perfect what is the usage of the past perfect? 
it expresses that an action happened before another action in the past. This is very important. An action that happened before another action in the past. When I had sent the email, I turned off the computer. So here we have two actions in this sentence. I turned off the computer, I sent an email. Which happened first? First, I sent the email, then I turned off the computer. So the action which happened first is in the past perfect. When I had sent the email, I turned off the computer. أقول لكم تاني كده علشان نبسط الموضوع كده مع بعض. In a past perfect, we use it to express something that happened before another thing in the past. So if I wanted to say that something happened before another thing, I use the past perfect. What is the past perfect? Had plus past participle. So I did two actions in the past. I sent the email, then I turned off the computer. Which happened first? I, I wrote the email. Then I turned off the computer. So I say, after I had written the email, I turned off the computer. Or when I had, uh, I had written the email, I turned off the computer. So it doesn't matter which word, when, after, or so on. The most important thing, the first action. The first action which happened in the past is past perfect. So we say, when I, turned, when, I, when I had written the email, I turned off the computer. Of course, we have some key words which express the past perfect, like the word after, as soon as, and when. Look at the example. After she had arrived home, she phoned me. As soon as she had arrived home, she phoned me. When she had arrived home, she phoned me. As you see here, the word after, as soon as, when is followed by the past perfect, and the other verb is past simple. We have also the word before, by the time, and when. Look at the examples. Before she phoned me, she had arrived home. By the time she phoned me, she had arrived home. When she phoned me, she had arrived home. As you see here, before, by the time, and when are followed by present sample, then past perfect. As you see, the word when can either be followed by past simple or past perfect. Here we have a very important note for you. The word after can, can be followed by verb plus ing. How can be followed by verb plus ing? احنا اتفقنا ان هي بيجي بعدها had وال past participle طب امتى بقى يجي بعدها ال verb ing؟ زي ما احنا شايفين في الاكزامبل كده after he had written the letter he sent it لكن after writing the letter he sent it Can you notice the difference between the two sentences? After he had written after writing What is the difference? The difference is that when we have a subject after the word after, we use the past perfect. After he, after she, after they, we use the past perfect. But if there is no subject, if there is no subject after writing, after writing the letter, he sent it. Again, we have the word on. It can give the same meaning and it's followed by ing. So we say on writing the letter, he sent it means as soon as he had written the letter, he sent it. On writing the letter, he sent it. So if we use on or after, it's followed by ing if there is no subject in the sentence. Again, we have the word having. Having is followed by past participle. Look at the example. After she had arrived home, she phoned me. Having arrived home, she phoned me. So, can you see the difference between the usage of after and the usage of having? After is followed by a complete sentence, subject plus verb, after she had arrived. But having, having is followed by the past participle. So we say, having arrived. 
What does it mean having arrived? It means after he had arrived. Another example, after he had boiled the eggs, after he had boiled the eggs, he ate it. We can say, having boiled the eggs, she ate it. So what does it mean, having boiled the eggs? Means after she had boiled the eggs or as soon as she had boiled the eggs. So again, having is followed by past participle. We have the word before. The word before also can be followed by verb plus ing if there is no subject. So we say, before she found me, she had arrived home. What happened first? She had arrived home first, then she found. So before she found, she had arrived. Okay, we can use before phoning, she had arrived. Before phoning, why did we use ing here? Because there is no subject. If we have a subject, we use the past simple, before she found. But if we don't have subject, we use the verb ing. So we say before phoning, before phoning me, she had arrived home. Here we have some other conjunctions which are very important and it consists of two parts. No sooner than, hardly when, scarcely when. All these words are followed by had plus past participle. But be careful, if these words are at the beginning of the sentence, they are followed by inversion. What does it mean, inversion? It means like making a question. So instead of saying she had, we say had she. Instead of saying I had, I say had I. So this is the inversion. This is like making a question. Look at this example. She did her homework, then she went to bed. Use no sooner. If we start the sentence with no sooner, we are going to say no sooner had she. No sooner had she done her homework than she went to bed. No sooner is completed by the word than. No sooner than. And again, it's followed by inversion or by a question form. No sooner had she done her homework than she went to bed. طب لو احنا عايزين نستخدم hardly هنستخدمها بنفس الطريقة. Hardly had she done her homework. بس بدل than هنستخدم when. Hardly had she done her homework when she went to bed. طب if we wanted to use scarcely, we will say scarcely had she done her homework when she went to bed. طيب لو ما كانتش no sooner at the beginning of the sentence. If we don't use no sooner at the beginning of a sentence. Here it is. If we don't use no sooner in the beginning of the, ten uh, the sentence, we will not have inversion. We will say she did her homework, then she went to bed. So she had no sooner done her homework, then she went to bed. So if no sooner, hardly or scarcely is not at the beginning of the sentence, it comes in between had and the past participle. She had no sooner done. She had hardly done. She had scarcely done. So we use these words in between had and the past participle. And don't forget that no sooner is completed by the, by the word than, but hardly is completed with the word when, and scarcely is completed or is followed by the word when. So what is the past perfect passive? The past perfect passive is that we use the object then had been plus past participle. Look at the example. They had studied English before they traveled. They had studied English before they traveled. So if we wanted to make it passive, we will say English had been studied. English had been studied before they traveled. So if, if it is active, we say they had studied English. But if it is passive, English had been studied. We add the word been. English had been studied. Okay, this is the passive form. Now let's do some exercise on the past perfect. Number one, I didn't see my friend. 
when I arrived at her house, she out. Of course, here I didn't see my friend. When I arrived, this is a past action. Why didn't I see her? Because she out. هي كانت خلاص. She out. عايز أقول إن هي كانت مشت خلاص. يبقى ال action ده happened before I arrived. So an action happened before another action. This is the past perfect. So we say because she had gone. Let's look at the sentence again. I didn't see my friend when I arrived at her house because she had gone out. When we use the past perfect, it means this is the first action. It means that she had gone out first. Then I arrived. عشان كده I didn't see her. Okay. Question number two. By the age of ten, I to swim. By the age of ten, it means when I reached the age of ten, I had learned to swim. So again, here we have the word by the age is followed by the past perfect. By the age of ten, I had learned to swim. Question number three. I didn't write to my friend until I his letter. Again, we have the word until. I didn't write to my friend until I his letter. Until again is followed by the past perfect. So I say I didn't write to my friend until I had received his letter. What does it mean this sentence? It means that I received the letter first, then I wrote a letter. Question number four. After the match, the players jumped with joy. Do you remember here we said when after is not followed by a subject. What do we use? هنا after ما فيش وراها subject. What can we use? After would win, winning, win, had won. طبعا many students can go to the answer had won. But this is a wrong answer. Why? Because after is not followed by a subject. So when after is not followed by a subject, we use the verb ing. So we say after winning the match. طب إمتى كنا نقول had won؟ لو قلت after they had won. After the players had won. لكن هنا after is not followed by a subject. ف we use the ing form. After winning the match. Question number five. Before for London, he had paid off his debts. Again here, before is not followed by a subject. So we use the ing form. So we are going to use before leaving for London, he had paid off his debts. Why do we use the ing form here? Because before is not followed by a subject. But if there is a subject, if there is he, for example, before he, كنا هنقول before he left. لأن before بيجي بعدها past simple. طب ليه هنا ما استخدمناش ال past simple؟ علشان هنا ما فيش subject. فهقول before leaving, before leaving for London, he had paid off his debts. Question number six. Seeing the snake, she felt scared. عندنا هنا verb ing. يبقى أنا محتاجة أحط حاجة بيجي بعدها ال verb ing. طب إحنا قلنا إن before can be followed by ing و on كمان can be followed by ing. So which one is better? On seeing or before seeing? طبعا إحنا هنا هنقول on seeing لأن on معناها as soon as at the moment يعني something which happened at the same moment at the same moment when she saw the snake she felt scared. So we say on seeing the snake she felt scared. Okay? On seeing the snake she felt scared. Question number seven, having. What is having followed by? Having is followed by the past participle. So we say having get, having gets, having got, or having gotten. Of course, having is followed by the past participle. So we say having got. Having got his degree, he began looking for a job. What does it mean having got his degree? Means after he had got his degree, he began to look for a job. Which action happened first? He took the degree first, then he looked for a job. 
So this is the end of our uh, lesson today. We have studied the past perfect tense. We compared it with the past simple tense. Of course, the past simple tense, uh, you have studied it before in the first term. But we uh, did a quick revision on it. And we explained the past perfect in detail. We said that uh, there are some key words which express the past perfect. Uh, after, as soon as, no sooner than, hardly when, scarcely when, until, all these words are followed by the past perfect. We said that before and after can be followed by verb ing if there is no subject after them. Try to answer as many questions as you can because practice makes perfect, as you know. Until I meet you again next time, inshallah. Wish you best of luck. Goodbye.